Hi everyone, Dave Thomas here again with another model rocket kit build. Today I'm building Rocketarium's AA-10 Alamo. This is the NATO designation for the Russian R-27 medium-range air-to-air missile. I want to give you a warning before we get started here. This is a really detailed kit and I don't recommend this for beginning rocketeers. You want to have several rocket builds under your belt before you attempt this particular rocket. Also pay close attention to the instructions. A lot of the parts on here have to go together in the correct order. There will be a few cases where we can skip around and I will alert you to those in the video. As with every rocket kit we want to make sure we have all the parts before we get started. Uh, we have a decal sheet here, and this was folded up inside the instructions, so if you don't see it in the box, check there. A parachute, a set of main fins, these are made out of balsa, um, another set of forward fins, and these are made out of basswood or basewood, however you like to pronounce it. And then we've got a little package here of detail items. And so these are standoffs and fin attachments and things like this that we would see in the real missile. Um, there's also the shock cord and the launch lugs in here. So if you're looking for a small part and you can't find it anywhere else, it's probably in this bag. We have a nose cone a tail cone, and this is probably stuck onto one of the body tubes. We have two body tubes. We have an upper body tube and a main body tube. Right, we have a considerable amount of plasticine clay here, and this will be used as nose weight since we have uh, fins so far forward on the body tube, we need that nose weight there to keep the center of gravity far enough ahead of the center of pressure. So don't skip this. All right. uh, this is the baffle assembly kit. And then finally the motor mount assembly kit. This model uses 24 millimeter mid-power engines. And it looks like everything that is supposed to be here is here. So I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way and we'll get started on the first parts of the build. For the first part of our assembly, we're going to put the motor mount together. And this is all packaged together in a sub-assembly here. And so all of our parts should be inside this. Okay, so we've got, this is a spacer for using D engines in it. I'm just going to set that aside. Alright, so for the first part, we're going to take the engine tube itself and the engine block. And I'm just dry fitting this here, but we'll put this in the aft end. There will be glue up in this region of the tube. And then this engine spacer simply slides in until it's flush. And then we'll remove that right away, and that will leave our engine block where it needs to be. Okay, so we're going to start by putting a ring of glue down inside there. And here I like to use an applicator to do this rather than just trying to squirt glue down inside. So I'm using some wood glue here. Uh, white glue will work as well. And this needs to be approximately three quarters of an inch down inside. And what that means is we're putting it down just below where the engine block will end up. So that it scoots the glue forward. Alright, so there's my glue inside there, and then the opposite end, I'm putting in the engine block. And I can just put this on a flat surface here, slide it up, and you see that goes in there nicely. Remove this, okay, and we're going to let that dry for a few minutes before we go to the next step. Next, we're going to install the engine clip, and so for this, we're going to measure 
from the aft end, I'm actually going to just make a little notation here. Just put an A on the aft end there so I don't get anything mixed up. All right, so we need to measure three and three quarters inches or 95 millimeters. Okay, so that's going to be right there. Okay, and this should put the top of the engine clip right at the top of the engine block there. And I've let this set a few minutes, but you can see the glue is still wet. And I actually want to do it this way because this, then the uh, top of the engine clip will go right into that glue if we've done everything right. Okay, so now I'm just going to take my hobby knife here cut a small slit. Alright, if you're meeting resistance, that means you've hit the engine block there. There we go. Yep. And so if you do just come up a little bit more. Okay, and I'm gonna pop that in. And you can see it's right at the top of the engine block. Alright, and then next we have this gray, what they call a locking ring here, and this is going to go over the aft end of the clip. And so this, the base of the locking ring, should be at an inch and a quarter. So I'm just going to measure right to there. I'm going to put a little bit of a line here. Okay, and then I'm just going to slide that back up for a moment. And add a ring of glue around that. And it doesn't matter if you get any on the metal there, because that's where the ring's going anyway. And now I'm just going to slide this over until I get back to that point again. And now I'm just going to make sure everything's still aligned straight. And I'm going to give this another minute or two to dry, and then I'll put a fillet in on either side of that locking ring. My glue set just a little bit, and I'm just going to apply a thin fillet here. You, this isn't necessary uh, because this locking ring d doesn't really take any load. But just for good measure here. All right, I'm just going to smooth that around. remove anything that got up on top there. And that's all I'm going to do for that. Now going on to the next part, um, we've got some fairly complex assembly to do. And so again, without doing any gluing so far, we need the tail cone. Okay, and this is packaged separately. Now the tail cone here is going to accept this part. Okay, so the there's a notch you can see down in there and here. And so that's where the engine hook is going to go. And again, I'm not gluing this yet, so I'm just sliding everything together. And then there are two centering rings. Okay, one of them has a hole in it, that's going to be the forward ring. The aft ring here is actually beveled. Okay, so the down side is a little bit narrower than the other side, and this is going to, there's a little notch there. So we're going to place the down facing down, and the notch over the engine clip. Okay, while well, still keeping that part aligned. And then this is going to fit so that the beveled edge 
fits right up against the tail cone there. And then finally, the forward ring can go in either direction. But again, line up the little notch there. Um, but that's going to go right about here. Okay, right at the top of the engine clip. Okay, no glue so far, but you do want to see how everything's going together here. Okay, so I'm going to take this back apart. And I'm going to let my current glue go ahead and set up for a little bit longer here before we glue this in. Okay, I am ready to install my motor mount into the tail cone here. And first we need a heavy layer of glue in the aft end. So right where those grooves are, we want those pretty much filled with glue. Uh, because the the wood glue itself will not stick well to plastic, but as it hardens, it will fill in those grooves and prevent it from moving. So we want a fairly generous amount in there, and then we'll clean off any excess. Okay, so now I'm going to align my engine clip as I put this in. Okay, and so you can see I've got a little glue coming out of there. So just take a finger or a tissue and remove that. Um, especially keep it out of the inside of the engine tube there. Okay. Next we need to put a ring of glue around the edge of the tail cone here and a corresponding one on the engine tube itself. And so the, the one on the engine tube I'm going to put just a little bit high so that as I slide the ring down it will push the glue ahead of it forming a fillet. Okay, and then I'm just going to dab some along that inside edge there. And again, what we're doing is making it so the glue will dry over the ridge down in here. And that's what's going to hold it on. It's not going to adhere so much to the plastic itself. Although if, if you feel the plastic here, it's got really fine lines to it. Um, I suspect it may have been 3D printed. So that will actually help hold the glue as well. Okay, so again, make sure that the, the downside is facing toward the tail cone here. And slide the notch over the engine clip. And then we're just going to push that all the way down. And then make sure that this sits evenly against the tail cone. I'm going to go ahead and just hold that in place for a few seconds. Okay, and then we can take some more glue here and form a fillet uh, because this will be transferring thrust to the rocket. We don't want that motor mount flying out of there. There we go. Okay. And then our last bit this. We'll take the remaining ring here and this can go on either face. And again this is going to slide so it's just over the engine clip there. So once again I'm going to put a ring of glue just above that spot. Right, 
and then once again align the notch. Okay, and I'm just going to slide that over just until I can see the top of the retainer clip there. And now we just need to make sure that this is all straight. Right, I'm going to smooth out the glue into a fillet on the forward or on the aft side there. And then just like I did before, we'll just make a little glue fillet here. It doesn't have to be really thick. And I'm going to smooth that around. Alright, give it one more check for straightness. And now I'm just going to let this whole assembly completely dry. Our next sub-assembly is the ejection baffle. And this is a good one to work on while the engine mount is drying. And this comes with its own set of instructions. Pull this whole thing out. All right, so we have a coupler. Uh, if you're missing pieces, look inside the coupler. A lot of times the baffle plates get stuck in there. Okay, and they do recommend using wood glue for all of the assembly here. And so we have two baffle plates, a coupler, and a screw eye. The screw eye is going to go into the um, wider, well, they're the same diameter, a wider set of holes here, baffle plate. And so here I'm just going to put a dab of glue right in that middle hole. And it doesn't matter which face you do this on. Okay, and then I'm going to insert my screw eye. And screw that in just till there's like one thread left above that. And then on the other side, I'm just going to put glue all around it to anchor that in place. Okay, and then we can just smooth this around like that. While that's drying, then we're going to put the other baffle in. So this is the aft baffle. So when it's in the rocket, the motor side's over here. And so for this one, we're going to put a ring of glue all around this. We want this to be fairly heavy because as we push it in, it's going to form its own fillet behind the ring. Okay, and then we're just going to push this in. Alright, and I'm going to leave a little tiny amount there, like a millimeter or two um, space between the edge of the coupler and the baffle plate so that once this dries I can put a fillet of glue around in here. Okay, and then for the other one, the way this is going to go in is when we, when we have glue inside here, we're going to put this in kind of sideways bring it up and then pull it forward and that's going to create a fillet here um, and we want it pretty much all the way around again okay they indicate a thin amount here that's a bit thick Okay, and at this, it's just as I said, it's going to go in kind of sideways here, and then we're going to pull it forward. Okay, and you can see how that pulls the glue up in front of it there, creating room for its own fillet. 
And just make sure you don't have any glue on the outside of the coupler. Okay, and if you've got you don't if you got a little bit in the holes here, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. And I like to clean it out. Now I'm just going to smooth this a little bit more to fill in all the gaps there. And if you want, you can actually take a small amount of glue and fill in any gaps along the edges. And again, make sure you don't have any on the outside of the coupler. Okay, and then I'm going to do a fillet here on the aft baffle plate. Smooth that around the edges. Keep it off the out part, outside part of the coupler. And again, if you've got anything in there, just clean those out. Okay, so that's finished and can be set aside to dry. Our next step is to mark the body tubes for the fins. And the fin placement guide here is on this sheet which is a, the insert in the main um, instruction sheet so we just need to cut this out And you want to have a little piece of tape handy here. And we're going to put this on the aft end of the tube. And line up the little tick marks there. So we have fin lines and then a launch lug line. So I'm going to start right here and just mark each one of these. Just indicate that that's a launch lug there. And then all the others are going to be fin lines. take the upper body tube and do the same thing. Now the one thing we won't need on the upper body tube are the uh, or is the launch lug line. So you just need to mark the fin lines here. Oh, that didn't come quite right. Next we need to extend the lines along the body tubes and traditionally we use a door frame for this. Uh, I'm going to use this marking guide because it's really hard to video a door frame. And so for the upper tubes we'll just take and draw the lines. I'll bring this up where you can see it here. All the way along the tube. Thank you. 
Now this next step is optional, though it only costs you a second or two at a time. Um, but you may want to take one of your fin lines here and extend it all the way up. And the reason I'm doing this is to give an alignment guide for when we put the two body tubes together. So I'm just going to take this one line and extend it all the way up the rocket. Okay, and then I'm just going to mark this one launch lug again so I don't get it confused with anything else. Alright, but this fin line here then I'll be able to use to line up with another fin line on the upper body tube. Now since this kit has forward canard fins, um, that means we're going to have a very far forward center of pressure and the way to keep this rocket stable then is to have a lot of weight forward in the nose. And so this block of plasticine clay comes with the kit and our job now is to stick it into the nose cone. And so the base of the nose cone has been drilled out and it comes this way. You don't have to do this yourself. And what we need to do here is simply take out the clay and pinch off or cut off pieces, roll them up into to little worms or pellets and stick them down in here. Now you may want to use something else. Um, I know people who will use things like BBs or shot and then put a layer of epoxy over them. That works fine, but you need to have at least 55 grams of weight in the nose. And so here I'm just taking off a little bit of the time, making a worm out of it. And then I'm just going to drop that down inside. If you need to, you can just break it off, make it a little wormier there. Okay. Um, the other way you can do it is cut this into smaller pieces, even than what I had there. Just kind of pinch them off and make little pellets. Okay. Whatever. Um, you just need to get it, the clay down into the nose cone here. Okay. And then every section you put in there, um, take a dowel or the handle of a tool or something like that and push that down inside. see down in there. And I'm just going to keep repeating this until all of the clay is down inside. Kind of see down there all the clay is mushed down inside and it fills the nose up to about here. Uh, it's a good idea at this point to wash off your fingers, get the clay residue off. And you may also want to just take a, a slightly damp um, washcloth or paper towel and just wipe off the um, clay residue from the nose cone as well. Just be sure you don't get any water down inside. Our next task is to install the motor mount into the body tube here. So we got, need to make sure we have the aft end of the main body tube. And this is going to fit in just like this. Okay, so I'm just going to dry fit this in. It's really tight. 
There we go. Okay, so if it's really tight and it doesn't want to go in, do go ahead and um, change things. Do a little bit of sanding inside on those rings if we need to. Okay. Um, it sounds like I may need to do that. So I'm just going to give this a light sanding. So now, if we put this in, ah, that's much better there. Okay, and so then that'll fit that way. Now, there's no specification as to where that engine clip should go. Okay, um, I kind of like to stick it on the same side as the launch lug is going to be, because that way when it's on the launch pad, the clip is out of the way. Okay, so now what we need to do is put a ring of glue about two inches up inside the tube. And here's where an applicator really comes in handy. So I can take my applicator here and just measure where two inches are going to be and stick my thumbnail there. Get some glue on this and then use my thumbnail as a guide. So I stick this in, put my thumbnail against the edge, and then rotate it around. Okay, and get a little more glue, and do the same thing. So that, I don't know if we can see this or not. Uh, just barely. Okay. And then once that's in there, I can now use it as a sight guide if I need to put more glue in. And now what I'm going to do is put this in partially. Uh, I don't want to hit my ring of glue quite yet. And so I'm just going to put this in about an inch. And now I'm going to put a ring of glue just inside the body tube. And I can just keep shifting the motor mount around. And if you get a little glue on the motor mount there, it's not going to hurt anything. Okay, and then the last part is we need to put glue in these notches here. And for the, the same way that the motor tube fit inside, having all this glue in these notches is going to eventually harden and that's what's going to hold it there. A little sloppy there, we'll clean that up. So I'm going to make it particularly heavy in the front, and then that'll get pushed downward. And then when, once we have this all together, um, we'll simply take and wipe off any excess glue. Uh, we'll get that one right now. Okay, so again, I'm going to line up my launch lug line with my engine clip. Slide that in. And now we've got to do this fairly quickly. Okay. Just twist it back and forth. Get that where you want it aligned. And now here, I'm just going to wipe this all the way around several times. And get rid of any excess glue there. And this does have to be done fairly quickly because um, as soon as the, the parts get into the wood glue, they tend to bind very quickly. And also that wood glue starts to set fairly quickly once it's been exposed to air in a thin film. Okay, 
So that looks pretty good right there. The next step is to install the baffle and put the two tubes apart, uh, together. Okay. So the first thing here is we need to mark a center line on the baffle, which is going to be at one inch. Okay, the screw eye side goes forward. Our main, take our main body tube here, and put some glue in a thin but wide film around the inside here. Okay, and then I'm just going to rotate this back and forth a little until I reach my line. Okay, and then I'm just going to let this sit and dry for a few minutes. While the baffle is drying inside the body tube there, um, we can go to the small parts bag and be careful not to break or lose any of the little balsa pieces. This bag also contains our shock cord. So I'm just going to kind of tease that out. Okay, and then I carefully set this aside so I don't lose any of the pieces. And our shock cord simply ties in to the screw eye here. And I'm just going to tie in a couple of half hitches. Okay, so there's one. And pull those nice and tight each time so that as the rubber contracts again, it helps bind the knot to itself. There's two. Okay, and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on my knot. And that's just going to help keep it from slipping. And then I'm going to cut off some of this excess just so I don't run the risk of getting it caught between the body tube and the coupler. Now I need my upper body tube, and this can go on either way. Um, I got a little bit of a crunch there, but I think it's going to work out. If for some reason you do get a damaged part, let Rocketarium know they'll get a new part to you right away. Um, this wasn't damaged enough that I was going to worry about it. But I'm going to thread this through. So you just got to shove the shock cord through there and then pull it taut. Okay, now, <clears throat> for this part, we're going to put a ring of glue just inside here. The tricky part is keeping the um, shock cord out of the glue as much as you can. And so, the way I do this is I try to keep the shock cord as short as possible inside there. So, back here... I'm holding on to it and you're going to get some on there but as soon if you do this quickly here all right and, and I'm leaving a little gap there so that for the moment I don't get it in there and then as I bring these together I'm pulling on the shock cord at the forward end now remember I made a fin line here and so now I'm just going to twist this over and up and align my fin lines there. And then on this end, I'm pulling the shock cord forward and then I'm just going to let it rest against itself. And now I'm just going to let this dry uh, for several minutes before we do anything else with it. So I just pulled my shock cord taut here and put a little piece of masking tape on there. And... You can just see it there, we're probably out of focus. Um, but this way, it's holding the shock cord away from the glue ring down in the body tube. Alright, our next major task here is shaping of the fins.
we have two sets of fins. The main lower fins here are made of balsa. They're very long. The canard fins are made of basswood or basswood. Okay. Now these are kind of strange looking. So if we come up here, okay, so this is going to show how those fins attach. They actually go on like this, right? um, which means you've got a relatively small surface here compared to the, the fin surface area of attachment. And then later on we've got all these little tiny attachments that go on as well. Okay. So if you want to do this as a fully accurate scale model or as close as you can get, um, you're going to need to do a lot of fin shaping. Okay, so to do this, um, you'll need to mark the fins along the edges here, and that indicates how far you should bevel these back so that you get this knife edge effect here. And then the same thing is true for the canards here. All right, so uh, for those, you'll go from the outer edge and angle those inward, but you'll still have the knife edge there. Now, if you just want a sport scale model um, for flying and not so much for accuracy, then just round off the leading edges um, here and here, and then the leading edge on this one uh, and again, I need to refer to that diagram. Okay, so this would be the leading edge for the forward canard fins. So in both cases, then you just round those off. And that's what I'm going to do, simply because the drawback to the knife edge, edge fins is that they're weaker. It's, I found it's really easy to crack those edges if your rocket lands a little hard. The uh, benefit to having the, the knife edge fins here, in addition to being more accurate, is that you will get a higher altitude flight. Okay. Uh, the instructions don't recommend leaving them all square because that may change the altitude uh, enough that the recommended engines will have too long of a delay time. All right. So given all of that, as I said, I'm going to go with the sport scale option and just round my fins. Uh, but we also need to talk about fin sealing. So the um, basswood fins here, those often you can just sand the surface smooth and a coat of primer is enough to give a smooth finish. With the balsa wood, they've got a much deeper, more porous grain. You'll probably want to use some sort of sanding sealer on these. Uh, personally, I am going to use a uh, polyurethane based one that just paints on much like a, a brush paint does and a couple layers of those is usually sufficient. In either case, go ahead and shape the fin edges before you put whatever sealer you're going to put on there. Okay, to round the edges, I'm using some fine sandpaper. This is 150 grit, I think. I'm on a sanding tee here, and I'm going to start just by running this over the corners of each edge. going to keep doing each edge and as I do so I'm just curving the sanding block over and you can either rotate the fin or rotate your sanding block and I usually end up doing kind of a combination of both With these laser cut fins, you, you can kind of get an idea of by just looking at the color change here. So, if it's still flat, you're going to see the darker color. Okay. 
Okay, and then you can check them edge on, on both edges, to see how round they are and also how symmetrical. If you get them very asymmetrical, your rocket's going to try and spin. All right, and up here on the small leading edge, I'm going to do the same thing. So it's pretty close to symmetrical. All right, and then I'm going to leave my uh, tip edge here squared, as well as my trailing edge. Okay. So I'll continue with the big ones off camera here in just a little bit. All right, for my canards, again, these are kind of weird shaped. Um, and so they, they attach to the rocket like this, so this is a leading edge, and you can either round or leave square the, the uh, tip edge here, if you're just doing the roundings. Uh, if you're doing the um, knife edge here, uh, they still leave this completely squared off. Okay, so I'm just going to round the, the leading edge. And since this is basswood, it's going to take a little more sanding. But I'm going to, just, I'm going to do this the same way, where I'm just going to start by taking the edges off on each side, and then rotating both the fin and the sanding block to round that off. And once more, you can use the uh, kind of sooted edge here from the laser cut to give yourself an idea of where you are on each edge. Kind of a blunt knife edge appearance. Right. Just kind of round this off. So that's pretty good there. And again, I'll do the rest of these off camera. Uh, you may note here that in the case of the basswood, um, the grain is not going with the leading edge. So you know, normally the leading edge on balsa, you have the grain going parallel with that. Um, with the basswood, I assume that they think this is hard enough that it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. I have the two main sets of fins shaped, and then there's uh, a forward set of fins here. These are very tiny, and they're in that small parts bag. Um, the instructions don't indicate that these need to have any kind of airfoil, 
So I'm simply going to quickly sand the edges here, and I'm just going to stack the fins together. And I'll make a few passes over some 120 grit sandpaper here. Alright, so now I'm going to go off camera and apply the sanding sealer to all of these. And when I come back, we'll be ready to start attaching the fins. While my fins are being sealed, I want to take a moment here and talk about painting. And so, um, there are a couple of ways to do this. You can just put all of the fins and all of the um, plates and things on and then mask the rocket as needed and just spray paint the rocket in sections. Alternatively, uh, you can go through and paint things like the fins, the various colors that you're going to need. All right, and they show some recommended colors here, some light gray, some gloss brown, and then some straight gray. Now, if we look at the illustration on the package, it shows the, the fins here being a, a darker color. Uh, and this all, almost shows them being a blue rather than a gray. Uh, but the, the instructions do say that if you want, you can paint the fins and such uh, before putting them onto the rocket. But you need to be aware of where you're going to need some blank spaces. So for example, On our body tube here, we're going to uh, need to prime this. And if you want to paint the body tube before we put the fins on, then not only are you going to prime and paint this, you're going to need some way of, of remarking your lines, okay, which you can do. Uh, and you'll also need to sand down in a line where those fins are going to be because if you try to glue painted parts to painted parts they're not going to stick very well. Uh, for the little tiny base pieces and such that they show here they recommend just uh, brush painting those rather than trying to spray paint them. Okay, So just be aware of that as we go into the finishing of the fins and adding the fins whether or not you want to paint those ahead of time and put them on or wait and mask them and paint the rocket all at once. Something else you can look at, if you look up this particular rocket online, um, there are actually quite a few variants of them that have different paint schemes. and You might want to take a look at one of those as well. Well, I'm waiting for my fins to have their sealer finish. I'm using some model putty here to fill in the little bit of a gap between the two tubes. And this stuff you can just smear in with a finger. You have to work with it fairly quickly though, because it does dry quickly. All right, but I'm just going to rotate all the way around the tube here a couple of times and spread this out. And then after that dries, we simply sand it off and what's left behind will and close the or fill in the gap between the two tubes there. 